<coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, <clears throat> another book review. I'm going to review a book called uh, God of the Wild Places, The Power of Adventure by Paul uh, Eunice Pringle. So, <clears throat> this is one of those books that I initially picked up and I couldn't quite get into. I read about a couple of chapters, then I left it for a bit. And then just a few months later, I picked it up and I read the whole thing in almost a winner. Um, and it just shows you that there's a time to read a book. There's a there's a time and, and maybe even a place and it it's just feels right to read a book. So there was definitely something the second time that I picked this book up. So it's, okay, so firstly, it's a, it's a great wee book. Um, I'll, I'll read the, just the first chapter. <clears throat> Have you ever felt stuck, trapped, where you assigned or did you assign yourself a role, a station in life which now has you locked inexorably into a rut from which you cannot deviate? Did you make decisions based on your conditioning which now bind you to a path in life which appears fixed, immutable and limiting? Read on. I'll tell you why I did what I did. I'll tell you what I did and what changed. Your passion, that which makes you feel truly alive, may be your salvation. The voice of the beloved calling you towards the life that is written for you. So basically Paul Pringle is a teacher. He's, he's living a life in London. <clears throat> it does seem like he's not completely happy with what he's doing. Doesn't think he's making enough money maybe feels he hasn't done enough in his life, hasn't quite achieved those goals that he wishes he had. It sounds familiar to a lot of us, you know, it sounds like, you know, life sh could have been better, you know, this isn't what I thought life was going to be. It's going to be, it should have been something else. I don't really feel that I'm living my own life. And he does say this in the book, am I really living my life or somebody else's life? So it's a lot of, a lot of thoughts like this. And at some point in his youth, he ends up, um, uh, getting, you know, drinking a lot more. Um, and then he talks about how he comes off the alcohol, uh, but he's still not fully fulfilled. Although a lot of people would say he's doing all right. He's a, he's a school teacher. He's got, a, you know, he's got a, <clears throat> a relationship. He's got a house in London or, you know, whatever. A lot of people say that's pretty good. So he finally decides to do something about it. And what does he do? Uh, he decides to sign up for something called the Marathon Disabla, which is a, ultra marathon through the Sahara Desert, 110 miles or something, <clears throat> 110 miles through the Sahara Desert. And <laughs> he hasn't even done a half marathon yet, you know, and I don't know how, so he just goes for it. Uh, but he does do some training beforehand and he talks about that. And it, it, it it's all about how that experience transforms him. <clears throat> and I have to admit, Firstly, it's beautifully written. It's not just about, it's not a physical book, but it is, it does deal with, it's not a physical book in that it's not just about, you know, blood and guts and that kind of side of it. It is very much about transcending, reaching your higher capability, a better you, what that involves, the, the you know, the, 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 the failures along the way. I mean, he has to, he talks about going to do this thing called the Thames Meander, 52 miles, and he gets lost and he's, you know, people have fallen out of it and everything. And, you know, there's this Marine that he talks about who basically, you know, has to bow out because his foot goes. And you really feel that. You feel that, oh my God, these guys have invested so much into this and they have to give up. <clears throat> and you get to sort of know, sort of feel you know, something for these characters. So it's, you know, and he talks about his journey, how he starts off and it's, you know, that's a real kind of, I mean, I could see this being a movie. I could definitely see, you know, that, you know, with the whole um, montage thing and, you know, trying to lift the, have a jacket with weights on and running and then puking up and all that kind of thing. But he carries on um, and he, uh, maybe I shouldn't tell you whether he gets through it, but he does a few events that are kind of extreme um, and they don't always have the answers you'd think that they would <clears throat> as well as the physical side of it he also has the mental side of it the mental journey about about and where he starts to ask himself like what is the point of all this what's the point of life and he has you know and he talks about 
his own kind of spiritual journey as well. He talks about his mum, who talks about, um, you know, finding the the uh, the intention and giving up something to God, even in the midst of ordinary things that you do, which I really like the idea of. So even if you do something simple, if you're doing it with a sense of God consciousness, then it elevates it to another level and it means something else and you live your life as part of that. And that's that's really good when he, you know, when he kind of discusses that. He, he, he talks a lot about young men and not having that um, sense of initiation into manhood and that they've lost that. We've lost that as part of the culture. And <clears throat> he talks a lot about, you know, if men don't have, it's a great phrase I think he uses, and he says, if you, men don't channel that inner fury, then if, if boys don't channel that inner fury, then they'll burn down the village just to feel the warmth. And I've heard that a few times being said, and that's a great phrase. And he, 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 he talks about how, <clears throat> people have lost that and, and they've lost these the, the, this, this idea of a process where they can find that um, sense of initiation of, of, of progression to manhood. So that's quite, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's quite good. I mean, it's a, it's a beautifully written book. Um, like I said, it doesn't take a lot, uh, doesn't take a long time reading but you'll get a lot out of this um i would definitely say that um i mean it's, i've just opened it up uh the chapter one jack at the foot of the beanstalk a few summers back i found myself sitting at home watching a tv interview featuring film producer david now lord putnam the focus of the interview was a government teacher recruitment initiative putnam was being tribute to one of his own school teachers she had been the one who had made him realise and believe that he could make a good living from pursuing something he felt passionately about. He went on to say that as a result of this, he had never really had a job, but rather a series of hobbies which had paid handsomely. Putnam was fortunate to have had this inspired guidance. My guess is that most of us aren't so lucky. Wow. Am I, I mean, what a, you know, straight away you go, wouldn't I love to be that guy and have a, do be doing work that isn't my job but is like my passion and that's just amazing and for for people to be able to inspire that new uh, and even recognize that as important is amazing <clears throat> um what can i say i i really enjoyed this book I, i'd written down notes and said things that, i mean there was things that i'd said but um i mean there's some beautiful bits in it bits where you realize that He's got over a sense of imposter syndrome that I'm not good enough. And there's there's a great moment where he's finally in the Sahara Desert and he's doing the race. Like he suddenly realizes that, shit, I am here. I'm actually running this race in the midst of all these other people. And, and I think he starts crying because he realizes that, and, it, cause it, and it's something about just pure being He's just being there now. It's forget about something to get to or, you know, think about or analyze. He's just there. So that that was great because you kind of gone through that with him. Um, yeah, and there's, um, I, I really get this idea, you know, this thing that about just, I think everybody has this idea about letting go of the world and just doing something for the sake of doing it. Um, and I think this is encapsulated really well in this book. Now, you might read this and you might not want to do a marathon or the Marathon de Sable or run in the Yukon or whatever, or you might do something else. You might get a cat or something that you've always really wanted to do that really inspired you um, he talks about power animals in this animals that inspire you i wonder whether actually i've got like a power human being um, maybe my power human being was bruce lee and reading about him and stuff like that and at some point you're a bit embarrassed about it and then you think oh, what the hell so i then started reading a book and actually i felt better for it um, so maybe it is about just connecting to that thing that you always really wanted to do when you were younger and 
you know, at some point you give up on that idea and then you just, you know, like I think he said that, you know, he wanted to be a soldier when he was younger, but actually what he realised was he wanted to be connected to the outdoors. He wanted to be, you know, pushing himself further in something uh, physically. And so maybe that's, you know, and, and we've all got something that we want to do. <clears throat> so this is an inspirational book from that, in, from that point of view, definitely a transformational book. Um, it's called The God of the Wild Places, The Power of Adventure by Paul Pringle. And um, very interesting book, I, a very inspiring book. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I would get it and, you know, uh, it's, it's well worth a read. Okay, that's enough for me. Thank you.